Hey guys, Anthony for Before Diesel. What's up? Basically, I have been asked, and it's a good question, uh, about these engine mounts. Okay, so this is on the 1KD engine mounts. Now, I suppose that this information is going to be fairly general in part. Okay, so it'll suit the other engines also. And some of it will be specific also so let's get on with the general information first so engine mounts pretty straightforward they're the mounts that go between that mount the engine they go between the engine and the chassis in any motor vehicle okay pretty straightforward so far right there's usually only a few nuts and bolts involved okay it's a really simple job if you like when i say simple you've got an engine sitting there and it's a few nuts and bolts Connecting it's a, like a rubber mount usually or vacuum assisted just depends what vehicle It's pretty straightforward. It's not a technical job like I don't know Changing your injectors is a bit more technical clean requires a few skills and whatever now. I'm not saying it's easy. So generally It's a pretty straightforward simple basic job. Okay, and because of that and because we're busy We don't do engine mounts. Okay, so we reserve our time for the harder diagnostic type, um, injector replacement, fuel system repairs, diagnostic type stuff, because anybody can do pretty straightforward jobs. Now, um, so, you know, like changing tires, right? You know, it's, it's not that hard changing. I'm not gonna tell you, I'll go, go to tires, there you go. Tire. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Tires, pretty straightforward. You know, removing and refitting bash plates, usually pretty straightforward if they're quality. Hope you get my picture. It's a pretty straightforward job. Now, it doesn't mean it's easy. So we're gonna to get to the specific side of it now. This is a 120 Prado with a 1KD in it. And these engine mounts are quite a pain to replace. So adds even more weight to why we don't do them because it's still a straightforward basic job. You can see what needs to be changed. You can see where the nuts and bolts are. Um, so it's all perfectly doable. There's not much that can go wrong really, but you need to be very careful to make sure nothing goes wrong. So there you go, you've been warned. Like if you forget something or if you jack up the engine too much and push it into the, the fan, into the fan shroud and things like that. So there's a lot of precautions and doesn't mean there's not a fair bit of work involved. Now, with these ones, the easiest way is, sometimes less is more, sometimes more is less, okay? And what that means is you remove more components out of the way. Now. What are we talking about? We've got the camera there. So the engine mount, it's up in there, right? You're looking at the bottom of it there. So you've got the vacuum line there you've got to remove. There's one bolt that kind of points straight upwards on the engine mount that goes through and it's got a nut on top. I'm just going from memory. I think it's a 17 mil or something like that. You can get to those fairly easy. On one side, there's a bit of insulation above it on the turbo side, I think it is from memory. Again, going from memory. Um, and that gets a little bit in the way, but you can get your spanner between it and whatever to undo that, that sort of thing. You know, you can jack up the engine. But look, what's a lot easier sometimes is just, you know, you get all your bash plates out of the way. You even get your air box and some people, you know, look, you're not going to go and take the exhaust manifold and the turbo off. But if you did, it would make it a really, really easy job, okay? Literally so easy, it's not funny. It is really easy if your turbo's off. So I suppose... The key, you know what I said about specific, some's general, some specific. Generally, we don't do them. That doesn't mean we haven't got people that do do them. So the way we roll is, we're not growing a, a greedy capitalist business. We share the love. So what I'm doing, I'm, what I've been doing for years is we work out who we think can do um, specific works on these vehicles and we share the love. We send the work to them. So we've got a, we call it the 4 Before Diesel Workshop Partners. So you can still contact me depending what your job is, whether it's servicing or, or you know, getting your brakes replaced or whether it's getting your injectors replaced or your engine mounts or a transmission flush and we can work out whether I can do it or not or whether one of our four before diesel workshop partners can do it or not. Now we've got a number of people that can change engine mounts because once again, um, it's not that hard. Now I don't think it's an easy job and you're going to just wait and get it done in 10 minutes. It can be... It can be a look, you know, it depends how many times you've done it, if you've got the way to do it right, but it can be a few hours, it can be a couple of hours, you know. If someone gets good at it, they're going to get it done quicker, okay. So it's all going to be charged out at, um, you know, standard fair workshop rate, standard repair times, regardless of whether they get it done in 10 minutes or five hours, okay. 
you're going to be looking around about three or four hundred bucks to get these engine mounts replaced okay labor side of it that's what you're looking at if you've got some time on your hands at the moment you can get in there and have a go the point i was trying to make before was if you've got your turbo off if you've got your anything like that off for whatever reason and or you've got your engine out this is your opportunity to change them kind of like free and easy while it's off so if you're getting any of that sort of work done now why would you do that now let's go a little bit deeper in the specifics now specifically this is the issue the engine mounts aren't like broken and it's going to come adrift and your engine's going to fall out so it's non it's not a safety issue you know it's not essential if you like there you go it's not essential to replace them this is important information how to diagnose whether you've got a problem or not so most common in a 120 Prado usually the early ones okay I can't we don't work on as many Hiluxes of course and they're just from what I've seen unless I've missed one your standard engine mounts but on the Prado luxury vehicle it's all a lot smoother and quieter and they're a different engine mount luxury vehicle so basically they do fail okay they did supersede them I don't know if it was in 2008 or 9 somewhere there so the earlier 120 Pradas are the most problematic if you've got it we haven't seen a 150 with the problem yet I'm going to describe it in a minute I'm just still giving you information we haven't seen a 150 with the problem yet so we believe perhaps they were fixed at a later date now we could be wrong and we're not there yet maybe the 2009 10 or 11s are yet to pop up I don't think so but possibly okay there's a lot of 120 Prados, so it seems clear to me that it was a problem with some of the earlier ones, and they've changed. I think they superseded them maybe a couple of times even, okay? They made changes, and once you've replaced them, you probably shouldn't have the problem again. So it's not something that's going to regularly need to be changed. So if you've got an O... Where the 1KD came out? 06, wasn't it? In the 120 Prado, yeah. 06, late 06 Prado with a 1KD, an 07 or an 08... Mm, 09s are probably okay but maybe 09 and you've got it it's a, like a vibration let me describe it to you right so it's going to be worse when it's cold sort of goes away when it's warm but not fully goes away depends how bad it is so if you start it up and you feel like a vibe sort of a rough vibration or chugging through the vehicle okay and they do this other little chug thing as well so don't, let's not be confused if you've got annoying vibration at idle it's just at idle that's it guys as soon as you accelerate off reverse drive whichever way well, as I was watching a, a funny video the other day, we've always said, oh, chuck it in after racing, <laughs> you know, reverse. And, um, you know, this video, what was it? D wasn't for driver, it was for daytime, and N wasn't for neutral, it was for nighttime. I haven't heard that one before. So, you know, um, I put it in daytime, it drives fine. I put it in nighttime, it just doesn't go. The, the car won't go. It's a heap of rubbish, you know what I mean? The car won't go in nighttime, mate. Anyway, it was funny at the time. Ah. Anyway, so talk about get off topic again so the engine mounts what we're saying the way to diagnose it really is you start it up you know in neutral it's probably not too bad as soon as you put it in drive it goes and sort of just vibrates through the car you don't want to do that again something like that anyway so just you feel it through the car you feel it through the steering you feel this vibration and you drive off and it's okay you stop at the lights there it is doing it again now if you were to put it in low range, this is the best way to confirm. If you think you've got it a little bit, but you're not sure, or, you know, and usually it will, when it warms up, it'll go away or, or definitely reduce. Um, if you think you've got it, but you're not sure, you put it in low range, and same thing, when it's cold, you put it in drive, it'll be almost like, kind of like really chugging, really, it's really rough. You just feel the, or feel the vibration through the car really badly in drive or reverse either way in low range is worse okay so if you put it in low range and you feel it worse don't go chasing a problem you haven't got if you haven't got a problem don't worry about it okay now to give you an idea of course like always only use genuine parts these genuine mounts look if you come we don't we don't generally send them they're pretty heavy i can't remember the weight we probably could send them but i don't know whether it'd be worth it um to pick up they're about oh, 110 bucks each or something from me we don't keep them in stock so you do have to let me know because we don't go through that many and of course we don't install them but we do supply them to our four before diesel workshop partners for replacement and of course diys that do it themselves definitely pickups not a problem um, so 220 for the pair genuine parts if you want them sent out we can probably do that but because they're heavy you're probably going to be looking like you know 280 or something for the pair so if you want to provide some support to us and you want to do that then 
by all means shoot me a text message let me know that's what you want and we can look into um, doing some freight quotes and work out a cost effective way of doing that I'm not sure what the demand's going to be it's probably something we can do if it helps you anyway so 120 Prados with a 1KD are the main issue at the moment. That's your specific info. That's how to diagnose it. Um, they can be a real pain to change, okay? So I would say, you know, if I was doing them, I'll do them when we got an engine out. But we don't do engines either, generally. I'll say generally. If you need an engine, of course, like always, definitely give me a call because we've got the best systems in place of getting the right genuine parts at the right prices and our network of repairers, which is very small because we're very fussy who we recommend, okay? And we're always looking for more people that can do these jobs right. So if it's you, please make contact. Um, engine mounts, I don't know what else I can tell you. Um, I can't tell you really go through all the steps to change them because it's just a series of whatever suits you and what tools, you know, it just varies. I don't know what tools you've got in stock, you know, what you've got there, what angles, what works, how long your spanners are, whether you should use a bar or a socket, some of the bolts can be tight. Fiddly to get to is the main thing. You might want to disconnect your battery because you might want to get things like, you know, your starter motor wires out of the way to get to some of the bolts, but maybe not, you know, it's just, it, like I said, it varies. You might be able to get to some of them from the top. You might want to get to some from the bottom. It's definitely easier once you start removing things out of the way. So at least you can see what's going on. Now there's some vacuum lines as we, in the picture there, right, you know, right there, you can see that there, but those vacuum lines, particularly on, I think it's on the other side, there's a, a clamp with a 10 mil bolt that clamps into the engine mount. If you take those out, remember to put them back. The clamps and everything are there for a reason. It's not throw bolts away and leave them off, which we've seen people do on vehicles before. They're the people we don't recommend and why we give you the information saying, be careful where you go, because these are the things we see and hear about all the time. And which is why we, it's really, we can't do all the work, okay? So we're sharing the love and sending it out to accredited repairers if you like unofficially accredited anyway what else can i tell you about engine mounts guys make sure you put it all back together properly so like i said i can't really tell you the best way because i don't really know the best way i haven't done a lot of engine mounts to be able to tell you the best way if you know what i mean i don't want to do engine mounts they've always been a pain on all sorts it's, it's not it's kind of a painful you can get it done it's straightforward but it's just a pain okay so we don't do pain we do jobs that are just require patience cleanliness and some thought, you know, um, experience and knowledge to be able to diagnose problems and stuff like that. So hopefully that's been helpful for you in somewhat to at least know where Sorry you guys, interrupted by the phone call. I know we're almost done, but I thought it's probably worthwhile just, you know, showing you. So this is the view from the underneath the vehicle, from the rear side on the passenger side, that's your view, right? And you can't really see much, can you? Okay, so to give you an idea, the bolts you need to undo to change those are the two you're looking at. You can see right in the middle of the picture, there's two bolts, right? There's two on the other side as well from memory. Again, I'm going from memory. I don't look at these sorts of components all the time, but I do look at lots of things like this all the time. It's easy to get things mixed up. So it should be a couple each side that look like that. And you've got the actual main mount, which is that round canister type part. There's a nut up on the top that goes through. There's a cast bracket that bolts to the block with approximately four bolts as well. And if you look over to the right, I'll put it right in the middle of the picture now, that bolt there, just below the starter motor wire, that's one of them, just to give you an idea. This is pretty basic stuff, but let's go over the other side and have a look. Okay, so if you look up there, um, at the below the turbo, in between the turbo, the pipe at the bottom of the turbo, you can see that insulation, that's what I was talking about being in the way of the nut that's up the top that you need to get to, sort of right in the middle of the picture there. So. You know, these sorts of wires and things you want to get out the way. As I said, you won't want to take, you know, the inlet side of the turbo off. You know, you'll need a gasket for that. You can buy a gasket kit for about, you know, it's kind of, yeah, you're spending a bit of money, 60, 70, 80 bucks or something like that for that gasket kit to get one gasket. Or you could probably reuse it. Those gaskets are usually okay. Anyway, just putting ideas out. There's different ways to do things. You can certainly maybe you know you can get them out by undoing see the bolts up on the block there again each side of that pipe coming off the turbo above it and below it right you might get that out of the way and that'll help you get that uh you know get them out out of the way but look either way they're quite fiddly i'm certainly not the expert on it okay i don't do them so please don't ask me to do them you can ask me who we've got around melbourne or sydney or brisbane or wa or whatever 
But you know, they, see how the access is so tight, like we're way back here, you know, you haven't got a lot of access to get, you know, in there. It's actually quite a pain, right? So, you know, you can see why we don't do them. So this is back to where we started underneath. Can't actually see anything from the front, at least until you get your bash plate off, right? See a little bit through there, there you go. So there's those other two bolts we talked about, right? So it's not that hard. You can get to all those four bolts, no problem. Uh, you take the nut off the top of the engine mount. If you take the mounting ones off the block, which you can see the two on the block, um, to the, I'll put them in the middle of the picture again. Again, hard with it holding a light and a camera and, and trying to get the pointer thing going as well. So middle of the picture, two bolts. If By getting that mounting plate out of the way, it allows you to get that engine mount out of the way and then sit the new one in place. So a bit fiddly, you might have to jack up the engine a little bit. Don't damage the sump if you're jacking things up by the sump, you know what I mean? Um, and you can also get different tools that hold the engine up at the top, which is why, you know, if you've got some time, you might want to get in there and have a crack. But if you can't be bothered with fiddly jobs that are a pain and it's not you, let us know and we'll uh, get the job sent off to someone that can do it. Once again, hope it's been helpful for, like I was trying to say before, before the phone call. Generally, I think the 150 is going to be okay. It's mainly a 120 Prado problem from what we've seen. Um, so that's all that really matters. If you found it informative, at least give us a thumbs up. Um, been reading some comments and that, so it's good for some feedback. Thank you. And bada boom, bada bing. Thanks for watching. See you guys.